the moment, and what a scene. This magnificent stadium, with the bands, with the crowds, with the banners, and now with the teams. Where everything is set now for this all London Cup final between Fulham and West Ham. The two captains, Alan Mullery on the left, and Billy Bonds, one of the quiet men of football. The first thing he wants to do after a game is to get changed and go home. One of the shyest characters in the game, although you'd never think of it that number four to see him play. Blockbusting tackles. And while John Lyle leads out the West Ham side, sitting in the stand will be Ron Greenwood. And it's Ron Greenwood's principles that have done so much for West Ham over the past decade. Graham Patton there and Frank Lampard and Billy Jennings, Alan Taylor and Kevin Locke. Irvin Day and Pat Holland. Superstitions in both camps, Fulham uh, playing in their black and red stripes right through their cup round. West Ham had played in all white for so long, but they've changed to their traditional club strips for this game. Two West Ham uh, reserve men, Ronnie Boyce on the right, who scored the winning goal, in fact, for West Ham here 11 years ago against Preston, and with him was Bobby Ferguson. His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent, with Sir Andrew Stephen on the right as you look at him, and Mr Ted Croker, Secretary of the Football Association. And the National Anthem. are presented to His Royal Highness with Peter Meller and Jimmy Conway. These really are tremendous moments for all these players. Les Barrett, the substitute, Barry Lloyd, Viv Busby with a nice grows the beard there. John Lacey, the big number five. John Fraser, John Mitchell. And Bobby Moore, he really looks so relaxed, Bobby, didn't he? And so sure of himself, Alan, your best friend. Yeah, he'll be loving this moment now. He'll be loving it. And Alex Stock. Looking to have a rattling good day out, whatever the result. Because that's his philosophy. And it always has been over 30 years of managership. West Ham's turn now. Billy Barnes presenting Graham Patton and Frank Lampard. Billy Jennings there. Alan Taylor, who began the season with fourth division Rochdale. What a fairy tale come true for him. Tommy Taylor, you could see there, coming up towards Mervyn Day. And by now, although Bobby Gould, the substitute, is laughing and smiling at the end there, you can be sure of one thing. The one thing they want to do now is to get the feel of the pitch underneath them and the ball at their feet. And that won't be very long away now. Well, the last time a second division side was here was 1973 when Sunderland upturned everything, including the form book by beating Leeds United. Will Fulham be able to do that against this West Ham side today? Special badges on that shirt. (laughs) 
buccaneering Billy Bonds. And now the moment. And this must be a good moment, Alan. Uh, you, you just wanted to get ready to play football now. Here we come, you want to knock the ball about, get used to the turf. Right, let's just check up on this West Ham side first of all, Alan. With Mervyn Day in goal, John McDowell two, Frankie Lampard three, Billy Bonds four, Tommy Taylor five, Kevin Locke six, Billy Jennings seven, Graham Patton eight, Alan Taylor nine, Trevor Brocking ten, and Pat Holland eleven with Bobby Gould the substitute. Team manager John Lyle, no place of course for Keith Robson, their strong striker who is out injured. At the other end, Fulham getting ready now, and this is their side. Peter Meller in goal, John Cutbush. Number two, John Fraser at number three, because, of course, Les Strong is out, injured. Number four will be Alan Mullery. Five, John Lacey. Six, of course, Bobby Moore. Seven, John Mitchell. Eight, Jimmy Conway. Nine, Viv Busby. Ten, Alan Slough. Eleven, Les Barrett. With the substitute, Barry Lloyd, and team manager, Alex Stock. Of course, there's been all the talk about the legal wrangles over Bobby Moore and his boots, and as you can see, he's wearing perfectly plain boots, Alan. In fact, all the Fulham players in the High Court this morning, they uh, have said that they would wear boots without any markings on them. Who's going to win that toss? I think it was Billy Bond saying we'll stay as we are. So West Ham will be defending the end where their supporters are. Alan Taylor there. Incredible to think that he was in the fourth division with Rochdale just a matter of six months or so ago. Cost £40,000. At the other end in the uh, Fulham goal, Peter Meller who really was superb in a cup tie-up at Carlisle, kept Fulham in this competition. And at the other end, Mervyn Day, of course, at 19, one of the youngest goalkeepers ever to play in an FA Cup final. And now we're a matter of seconds away from the start of this uh, game. A last blow of the nose for referee Pat Partridge. And now the atmosphere just about, in fact it's quietened a little as though the crowd are just drawing breath and waiting for it all to begin indeed the two sides are changing over it's going to be Fulham who will be defending the uh, side on our left which means uh, a slight delay because Mervyn Day has gone back to his goal to pick up his gloves there's usually a ritual between goalkeepers that they shake hands uh, together in the centre circle when they meet, and Miller and Day are about to meet each other now, and I've no doubt at all that that ritual, yes, will be completed. The sun is out brightly now. The game offers all sorts of bright possibilities. The 1975 FA Cup final is almost underway, and it'll be Fulham who will be kicking off, attacking the goal to our right. Fulham in white, West Ham in their claret and blue, and white shorts, and away we go. Mullery now, switching the ball away out to the left there. Fulham who've had such a long, long cup run. Conway... Trying to sneak it forward, here's Brooking. Player of delicate skills, but he uh, lost it there and lost it once again to Mallory. Played forward again for Alan Slough, but uh, Billy Jennings right in there in the first free kick of the cup final goes to Fulham. Foul by Billy Jennings on Alan Slough. Alan Mullery behind it, Bobby Moore is there. So from behind Mervyn Day's goal, that's how we see it. There are two, four, five men in the West Ham wall. 
and a Fulham player, John Mitchell, has infiltrated as well, which I don't think Fulham, uh, I don't think West Ham will be too happy about. Moore is on the ball, playing it wide there. Back again there towards Alan Slough, and another free kick. That time by Pat Holland. Twice Alan Slough's been floored, and another free kick for West Ham. Bobby Moore will float this one in. Curled in again there. And Mitchell, in fact, was off the mark with the header, but uh, the West Ham marking wasn't terribly good in that uh, defensive situation. No, they let, they let the lad have the first run on him, a bit like Jeff Hurst. A bit like Jeff Hurst goal in the World Cup, they let them have the first run, and Bobby played the ball, and it was a great ball in. Day with the kick. Good jump by Jennings, but uh, John Lacey was there that time. Busby got in as well, here's Mitchell now for Fulham, and Jimmy Conway, and Fulham making the early running here, but stopped that time by Frank Lampard. Mullery keeping it going now with Conway. Here's Busby again for Fulham. Padden and Lampard between them, combining, and it's uh, Padden, in fact, and then Lampard who finds Kevin Locke. Almost ran into trouble and then gave it to Alan Slough. And there's a good shot, and they had to take it. Well, West Ham were all over the place there. Really was a poor ball out. I think Mervyn Day is doing very well here because this ball's bent a little bit and he was he did well to get hold of that. Now he's calming things down because they, 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 they started off very well for him. I think he's doing very well for a young keeper here. A high one for Jennings. Can he get in behind Bobby Moore? He might yet do it. Ron Chellis, the uh, linesman on the far side, indicates a corner. So West Ham get a corner. Which Graham Padden will take. There's Tommy Taylor up again. Lacey will watch him. Cut push at Fraser at the post. Billy Bonds right in there. Padden will curl one in with his left foot. And there it is, curling in there. But uh, a goal kick. Moore to Cutbush. Play towards Mitchell, and he took it very well indeed, Mitchell. Here's Les Barrett. On for Busby. Mitchell again, and Taylor in very quickly. Bit of squirming going on that bench now. That's the uh, Fulham side to the right. Busby. Lock really can't sort themselves out at the moment, West Ham. And here's Mullery in a bit of space and Conway helping him. Conway trying to play it wide again and it's uh, John Mitchell who's come on this side now. Trying to tease Taylor into a mistake. Conway with a long, long cross there. Barrett is up there and up well. Very unsure of themselves, West Ham at the moment, Alan. Well, it's not so much West Ham unsure of themselves, they're making them unsure, but it's a great ball at the far post here. He knocks it back, he does everything right, he knocks it back across the goal. It was a great effort. But West Ham haven't settled down at all, because mainly I think Fulham have come right at them and they've tried to get around their throats early on in the game. Well, can West Ham shake Fulham away from their throats? They've got a throw on the far side, which Billy Bonds will take. Lacey, a long ball away, Taylor covering for West Ham. A gentle nod back to Mervyn Day. Again, the long ball. Noticeable that uh, West Ham have put Billy Jennings almost on Bobby Moore to try and keep close to Moore the whole time. Maybe to put him under pressure. Here's Brooking in the first run from him, and look at that for an interception again by Bobby Moore. Barrett. West Ham contesting for that ball now in the middle of the field a little more. Holland trying to shrug his way past Cutbush, and in fact it's a free kick. 
And in fact, it's uh, John McDowell with it. He'll aim towards Billy Jennings and Alan Taylor, number nine. Taylor making a run towards the near post. And in fact, it's Taylor with the backward header, but straight into the arms of Peter Mella. Played for Conway, but Taylor's coming up behind him, and Conway wasn't aware of it. Good block challenge there, which Billy Bonds won, and it comes towards Jennings. And now for Brooking, referee played the advantage, he's found Holland now. Patton following in, the short one for McDowell. In for Billy Bonds, stringing a few passes together now, West Ham. Holland away on the far side. Gone past Fraser. Taylor right in there. Now with Mallory. And away goes Busby. Almost one against one, and Locke gets there first. Good, sane, sensible covering there by Kevin Locke. Taylor. To Jennings. No, he didn't get to Jennings because uh, Cutbush was there first. Patton to Lampard. Go a long way. Bonds. McDowell. Brooking in a bit of space on the right there. Now, can Brooking get this cross in? He can, and it's a very good one. Jennings is right in there, so too was Lacey. McDowell turning it back again. Jennings is offside. It won't mean a thing. with Moore. Slough to Moore. Mitchell, get it to Hall. Taylor. McDowell, Locke. Again, allowed to go a long, long way, and he's going on and on. Busby. Nice little ball played by Conway there for Cutbush. Busby. Conway. Mullery shouting the uh, odds there for Conway. Cut out by Tommy Taylor for West Ham. Here's Patton. Taylor again. Lampard. Slough getting in the way there for Fuller. Now it's with Brooking. McDowell linking in nicely with a lot of pace there into this West Ham attack. Holland wanted to get in and played beautifully there by McDowell for Holland. There's the cross coming in, and Cutbush getting it away. That looked much better for West Ham. Oh, that was a high challenge there, and quite rightly pulled back by the referee. A West Ham settling a little bit now, Alan? Yes, it looks as if it's got the pace of the game now, and it's settling down and playing some good stuff. Now it's with Mallory. Razor making a good, bold, challenging run down the left there for Fulham. Now McDowell. Played for Holland. Jennings is up ahead of him, Bonds is inside. Taylor's on this side of the field, so too is Patton. Space ahead of Billy Bonds now. Gone past Bobby Moore. And Taylor was down on the ground and really couldn't compete. And Bobby Moore takes it up again for Fulham. Mallory calling Busby towards him and getting it. Now, can Busby's pace get the better of McDowell? Fulham's throw. Just over ten minutes gone, no score. Mallory will take the throw, Mervyn Day. 
Taylor supporting him. It's with Busby. And a goal kick. Any patterns developing yet, Alan? I think that the... They just stop sparring now, these two, they'll get down and... Well, Fulham started very, very well, and I think we'll start to see West Ham play a little bit of football now. Jennings leaping for this one again, but uh, beaten by Slough. Osby winning it in the air, but Billy Bonds again covering for West Ham. Lampard. on now for Mitchell. Now blocking. Mullery really after him, and again the referee Pat Partridge is playing the advantage there, playing it well. Oh, Holland, a rather slack ball there, putting himself back in trouble. Locke playing a rather casual ball there, and Fulham get possession again with Les Barrett. Bonds is after him, but not before he plays it for Mitchell. So Mitchell now for Fulham. Conway. looking for the yard, and Lampard wants to deny it him. And Holland goes in as well, but it's a corner for Fulham. The sign for big John Lacey to come up as well. Six foot one of him. So McDowell on the first, Day. And Mitchell right in once again. Man who scored those vital goals in the semi-final. And it's Conway with the corner for Fulham. Hit a little lower this time towards Lacey. Oh, my goodness, just wide. This is a great corner. He drives it across. There's nothing you can do about these corners when the hit is hard and as accurate as that. And with this fella so big in the air, that's a great header. Good job it wasn't on target. Well, he's only scored two goals this season, but he very, very nearly added the third. Busby. Absolutely no sign at the moment of Fulham being second-class citizens from the second division. Remembering they started this uh, tournament at 500 to one outsiders. Busby again now for Fulham. McDowell getting in still with Busby, a great shot, and it took a save from Mervyn Day. And it's Day who's having all the work to do at the moment. Lampard now for West Ham. Coming up to a quarter of an hour gone, still no score. But Fulham at the moment really carrying this fight to their first division opponents. Here's McDowell. Taylor. Well, West Ham will get it through Holland. Taylor is out there now. Barrett making life awkward for him. A goal kick. And after 14 minutes of the Scottish Cup final, Celtic leading Airdrie by one goal to nil. Celtic one, Airdrie nil, up at Hampton Park. Here at Wembley, nil-nil. Now Brooking. Holland, McDowell's gone foraging through there. And uh, Holland has found him, here's Billy Bonds. There's the cross coming in now towards Taylor, but he didn't really connect. Conway being told by Mellor to get it away. And here it is with uh, cut push. Conway. Beautiful stride Jimmy Conway's got. Mitchell. No. 
Conway again. Padden. Lacey first for that one. And a nicely directed header again to Jimmy Conway. Now, can he get past uh, Padden? He can. The cross is lower this time, and Locke was there to meet it for West Ham. One of the youngest men in this West Ham uh, defence. But there's a lot of authority about Kevin Locke's play. Mallory's throw to Viv Busby. Conway to Busby, to uh, Mullery, Slough, Cutbush. A little chip on again, that's a good piece of running by Slough. And West Ham a little lucky to be able to get that one away quite as easily as they did. A handball by Taylor, and a free kick again to Fulham. be just a little upset and uh, agitated with the way things are going at the moment for West Ham. West Ham really being pushed back, and there's Lacey right up there again and again, Mervyn Day getting in just before John Mitchell. <laughs> Jennings couldn't keep his feet, Holland couldn't make it, Bobby Moore did, but it's a throw to West Ham. Bonds. Holland. Back for McDowell. Holland playing nicely there with McDowell. McDowell's doing some good work linking up with the defence, and the cross there taken by Mellor. <laughs> Forcing it onto Mellor's left foot, which obviously West Ham regard as the weaker one. I'd like to see Graham Padden pushing forward a little bit more for for um, West Ham because there's some, he's just sat in a hole here on the left-hand side of the field and he's not being adventurous enough for me. And it's Busby who's being very adventurous indeed for Fulham and Conway indeed who's doing the same sort of job. So we'll watch Padden in future to see whether he does push up a little more. Here's Mullery. They're really dominating this uh, situation at the moment in the middle of the field, Fulham. And uh, Billy Bonds turning it back to Mervyn Bay. And yet it was in the middle of the field where we thought that West Ham might have the whip hand. At the moment, it's the likes of Conway and Mullery who are doing all the work. Four full. Fraser's header. Barrett beaten by McDowell. He's looked fairly adventurous, and so too has Billy Jennings. Only Taylor is in the middle. They're waiting for Patton to come up and waiting for Holland too. Here's Holland. Being forced out. Cross comes in and Mullery gets it away. Lock in very quickly, beating Mitchell for it. Here's Billy Bonds. Bonds holding it and doing very well there because he sensed that uh, half his team was offside and knew that he had to hold it. And here's Graham Patton, the man that Alan Ball would like to see pushing up much more for West Ham. Here's Mallory, who's dominating so much of the play in the middle of the field. Cut push back to Peter Mallory. And that's just the sort of thing that Mallory is doing, influencing the whole of this Fulham side. Patton trying hard to shake Viv Busby off the ball. Couldn't do so. Here's Conway leading the charge again for Fulham. Stopped by Kevin Locke, who's getting in some very good tackles at the back for West Ham. And there's the pass now for Billy Bonds. And they've really got to start asserting themselves in the middle of the field, West Ham. Here's Holland. Billy Bonds again. Took a deflection there, and Miller saved it from going over for the corner. Forcing Miller to kick with his left foot again if he can. A 
I think Alex Stock must be fairly well pleased at the moment, uh, Alan. He must be delighted. His team have adapted very, very well. They've surprised me and, I'm, and they've surprised West Ham as well. They're playing great. They're by far the better side at the moment. And it really is in the middle of the field where Fulham have uh, really dominated things so far. Yes, they've done very, very well. Uh, Bobby, Bobby, Moore's, Bobby Moore has just put a, a bad ball out. It's 20 minutes gone. Yeah, the first mistake. Barrett, back for Fraser, planted on again for Mitchell. So again, it's a Fulham throw. Again, West Ham are being pushed back. Slough hitting one high across that goal. Conway will gallop after it. Looking after him, and it's a West Ham throw now. Graham Patton with the throw for West Ham. Jennings. Patton. And Conway again. Played nicely by Conway for Slough, and again Fulham dominating this game until Locke once again gets in for West Ham. Now Patton is released at last to come forward. Muller is after him, <laughs> and again a good piece of refereeing, allowing that one to go on, and it's with Brooking until Lacey gets in, and his clearance sends Mitchell away. Taylor backing off, McDowell coming to support, still with Mitchell looking for support now. And a rather slack pass there. Busby didn't really help an awful lot, and Lampard was able to cut it out. Again, Lacey in there first. Here's Conway. To Mullery. Conway, Mullery and Slough really enjoying themselves in the middle of the field now for Fulham. Spraying their passes about and getting Barrett on his way now. A deep one there, I don't think Busby will get it. They've got West Ham under the cosh here for them at the moment. And it's at times like this they've got to knock a goal in. I mean, they're so superior, they've got to knock a goal in. Otherwise, it'll, you know, West Ham will get the confidence, well, get a little bit more confidence back. Billy Bonds is shouting away there, trying to do a little bit of encouraging. They've got to start knocking the ball about now. It's with McDowell. Jennings. Coming away nicely from Bobby Moore there. Horn. McDowell. This time for Lampard. Got plenty of time to measure his cross for this one, or maybe he'll have a go himself. And Mella was down behind it. Must be. He's giving this game every chance, allowing everything to go that he possibly can, and here's Brooking. That's not a bad cross by Brooking, and Jennings is on the far side, got his header in well! And Mella pulled that one out. What a good header by Jennings, though. It was a great header at the far post, he's got up a tremendous height here, and knocked it back across the goal. It wasn't as difficult to save as it looked there, but it was a great header. Now Mitchell's seeking this ball, but Taylor again getting in before the full of number seven. Again, Jennings up there. At that time, uh, Fraser able to turn it back to Bobby Moore. Curling pass there, all of 40 yards, direct to John Cutbush. Running with such aggression at the moment, Fulham, and then Conway, his first mistake. something there that the referee should have given but didn't. Alan, look at this one again. 
I don't know what the referee's given here, but is he given a foul or but he's, it looks at the corner, but he's given a he gave a free kick to Fulham, I think. He must have felt that Billy Bonds uh, charged unfairly into Mello. It didn't really look that no, way. No, it didn't look that way at all. Busby. Billy Bonds. McDowell. Taylor. Again, it wouldn't run for Billy Bonds. And unlike him, he just shrugged his shoulders and uh, started ambling back. Not quite the same sprint that you normally see in Billy Bonds' stride in Fulham now, pushing forward again. Patton almost pushed off that ball, and uh, I think he's probably got a free kick, he has. Drop kick again from Mervyn Day. Fraser and Slough helping it on its way for Fulham, but here's McDowell for West Ham. Brooking. Bonds up outside it. And Brookings pass cut out so calmly again by Bobby Moore, telling him where he's going to put it. And look at that for a pass for Busby to chase onto. And Locke might have been pushed off this one, but Locke is coming back for some more. I think he's given away a corner, the linesman said no, it looked to me as though that ball had gone over the line. But I think a quick word from you, Alan, about Kevin Locke, who's uh, done some tremendous work at the back. He's, he's had to be really on his toes, Kevin Locke, and he, he looks a very, very good player in this game. Very, very cool, he's, he's a young boy, but he's doing ever so well. He's marshalling his defence fantastically well. Now it's Fulham again in possession with John Cutbush. Mitchell still finding Conway and Conway finding Mitchell again couldn't get his shot in though Slough did West Ham have got to get a hold of this midfield they've been overrunning midfield completely and when they're knocking the ball forwards it's not they're not holding it up and giving the midfield players a chance to come and join up with them. And there's the man who's got to do a bit of it for them now, Alan. Yes, he's got, yes he's got to be an inspiration now. If, if they ever need him, they need him now. So Fulham continue to look the better side, but Lampard in possession for West Ham. The ball's going forward up to, up to the West Ham front men, and they're not holding the ball up as, as I'd like to see them, and giving the, the midfield men a chance to come and join up with them. Patton with the throw for West Ham. Lampard. A deep cross towards Billy Jennings. Lacey is right there then, heading it, out, heading it out, and Mallory also doing his work. But here's Bonds. Mallory doing some more work there, really getting involved. Oh. And then beating off both Jennings and Bonds. Great example there by the Fulham skipper. Free kick to West Ham. Billy Bonds now for West Ham. McDowell. Moore versus Jennings, and Moore got the header in. Busby. Nice turn there by Viv Busby for Fulham. Mallory linking up again well. Slough played for John Cutbush. for Mallory again, Moore's come up over that halfway line almost for the first time, there's a long pass there by Mallory, and what a good one, and Barrett's on his way again, but the whistle had gone, it's a free kick. <laughs> Fulham fans not happy with the treatment that Les Barrett got there, but he's going to be a dangerous customer along these wings this afternoon. Longest serving player at Fulham, he uh, joined them in 1965. So Bonds and Locke prepare now for another assault in the air. So too does Mervyn Day, trying to shout some instructions, and it's Bobby Moore once more lifting that ball into the West Ham penalty area. Slough is there, it's Kevin Locke once again who gets a header away. And Holland, stopped by Slough. Very, very good tackle by Slough. 
and there seems so much more conviction about Fulham's play in everything they do. They're always there first. Yes, they're doing great. They've got to score a goal, though. Whilst the superiority, they've got to score a goal to, to go on and win this game. So, just over half an hour gone, still Fulham nil, West Ham nil. Bobby Moore. And with half an hour gone in the Scottish Cup final, still Celtic leading Airdrie by a goal to nil. Bobby Moore again, taking possession for Fulham. Trying to find Mitchell, but Taylor sticking close to Mitchell there. Sticking out the long legs, and again the referee right to allow it to go on, but to Busby won't stop that one. <laughs> Offside decision. Looks to be enjoying himself, Alan Murray. Yes, indeed he should be, the way his side's been playing for the first 30 minutes of this game. <laughs> Mullery planting it forward again. Slough, you see, making the sort of runs that Alan Ball was saying that Patton should be making from the middle of the field for West Ham. And Barrett now on his way. Can he keep it in? No, he can't. And it's a goal kick. Fulham are in complete control of this game at the moment. The, the, they've got the front three runners of, of West Ham completely in their pockets as back four. And that's, that's, that must be very worrying for John Lyon. And for Billy Bonds, the West Ham skipper on the ball at the moment. Brooking, nice turn by him. And now, could it come for Billy Jennings? No, it might come for Patton. The first time West Ham have really looked dangerous, and again it's Bobby Moore, their old skipper, who gets it away to Mitchell and then away. Taylor. Lampard. The little flurry might have done something for them. Fulham coming out quickly, and they've caught him offside. There's a great turn by, by Brook in there to cross that ball. This fella can win the game on his own, so he's a great runner with the ball, and he's got great skills, plays good balls in. I'd like to see him keep going forward and playing like he's playing. He's, he's doing quite well. Fraser in for Slough. Mitchell, the little backward header again to Alan Slough. Billy Bonds with his socks down at his ankles again. So early in the game. Conway. Busby. Conway. And Holland tussling. And winning and finding Patton. Now with Frank Lampard. The long clearance towards Billy Jennings. Thankless just task really for Jennings to try and beat Lacey in the air. But he's very, very strong in the air himself. It's with Patton. The bonds. Lampard. And Brooking taking that very well indeed, Trevor Brooking, but the whistle had gone. And I think that's the first, well, poor decision, if you like, that the referee has made, that uh, really they should have, he should have allowed the advantage there. The whistle went just a little too quickly. And instead of allowing Brooking to go on his way, it's a free kick and gives Fulham the chance to get back. Tommy Taylor up for this one, being watched by John Lacey. It'll be that great left foot of Graham Patton's again. It crosses it in, Billy Bonds has gone towards the near post. And it's flicked on and just over! by Alan Taylor. This free kick is driven in again. You can't stop these free kicks. They're great balls, and this boy's just got his head to it. I don't think he meant to head it for goal. I just don't think he meant to head it in that direction, but it just went over the bar, fortunately, for Fulham. Now more. Space on the far side there for Fraser. Inside for Slough, look at the space here now, space for Mallory too. West Ham marking the space closer to their own goal though at this moment, but Fulham are always giving themselves a chance by spraying these long balls out and are relying on the acceleration there of Barrett and Conway with the header. Tommy Taylor blocked that one and Patton maybe can get it away. Pat Holland. 
Goal kick. West Ham, they're employing the midfield players, are working back and working back, and thus they're not been, going, being able to get forward and play with it, you know, and support the front three. And this has allowed Fulham to come forward and pen them in their own half for, for long periods. Taylor's header. Busby. And Fulham's throw. being challenged by Locke, who has been West Ham's best player so far. Mullery spraying it out again, but that time McDowell got in. Mitchell, Slough has had an exceptionally good game. Fraser. There's not a Fulham player who hasn't done well. There's Lacey again being positive and getting in first. Billy Bonds, Tommy Taylor. Here's Lampard, looking ahead for Holland, looking ahead for Jennings. Patton up there as well, and Brooking, and he's played it for Brooking. Bonds has made a great run through there, and what a good ball by Brooking, and Bonds hit it on the volley. It's the first genuine, really, piece of fluent football we've seen from West Ham, and uh, Trevor Brooking, tremendous ball by him. And a great run by Bonds, catching it on the volley, too high, though. It was a sort of touch from Trevor Brooking that West Ham sorely need at the moment. But it's Fulham searching forward again with Alan Slough. Bonds right back there. A West Ham throw. McDowell. More there before Jennings. Got to try to get the ball up to the front runners, West Ham, and the front runners have got to hold the ball up for them so they can come and support them. Otherwise, every attack will find on the Fulham defence. Brooking now. Now it's Lampard. There's a go himself. That could have gone anywhere. Slough. To Fraser. Was that a foul or was that a throw? A free kick to Fulham, a foul by Billy Bonds, Mullery with it. Played in for Mitchell. Here's Slough. Padden. I think Cutbush will get there first. Really called out for the short ball to Conway there, but I think uh, Cutbush felt that he would go on his own. Now Brooke. Lampard. Jennings up ahead, Taylor away on the left, Holland away on the right, still with Frank Lampard, though, they let him go a long way. Padden. Lampard having a few words with Mullery, I think, after the challenge there. Brooking. There's the ball played for Lampard again, but... Cutbush was in first. What a good ball there from Conway now for Busby. Five minutes to go to half-time and still no goals. But no doubt at all which side looks most likely to get them. And that's four. But here's Holland now for West Ham. A touch by Alan Taylor to Billy Bonds. Patton. Curled in short again towards Taylor. Bobby Moore was again there for West Ham. Conway. In goes Taylor, trying to assert himself now for West Ham. Patton. Stretching it out on the far side now for McDowell. Alan Moore is having a lot to say to Jimmy Conway about something or other. 
he's telling them to knock the ball forward and you've got to go and do it, he says. You've got to go and knock the ball forward and support these people up front. They were having a right argument yes, there, they Alan, were. weren't they? Well, he's right. If Alan Mullery thinks there's something wrong, he's right. And the player's got to be able to, to take what he says because they both want to win this cup. And the only way they win it is to do things together, no matter what, how harsh he is or what he says to him. And the long clearance again. Bobby Moore once more in command. Conway. been in so much of the action this little Irishman John Mitchell a few weeks ago he was almost on his way to Watford and then Fulham had second thoughts and I'm sure they're delighted that they did Billy Bonds telling Pat Holland to go forward down that right touchline Padden to McDowell Patton again. West Ham are pushing everybody forward. Only Day is in his own half of the field now. Patton. Bonds, it won't reach him. Because again, Fulham were first. Moore, Mullery to Moore. And there's the old master again. This time now for John Fraser. Barrett wants it as well, which is a good sign for Fulham. They all want this ball at the moment. Busby. McDowell. Holland. Busby fighting back. No space at all in there. At least there's a lot of space and it's filled by the white shirts of Fulham. And as Alan Ball was saying, the uh, West Ham front runners at the moment are having a pretty thankless task. The service hasn't been too good, but they've got to hold it so that uh, people can come up from the middle of the field and support them. Here's Slough. Beaten by Bonds. He's nowhere to go here, Billy Bonds. Look, he's got to come square again. They, they can't go forward and play into the heart of the Fulham defence. That's now where they've got to go. Brooking now to Holland. They're running up blind alleys all the time, aren't they, West Ham, at the moment? They are, they are that. And an incredible result up in Hamden Park now. Airdrie have equalised. 1-1 with 42 minutes gone. Celtic 1, Airdrie 1. I think there'll be a lot of talking in that West Ham dressing room in half-time. There'll be a lot of, of hard and straight talking going on, I think. By those men there? I think so, yes. They, they, they must be very worried. Very worried indeed. Now, Pat. Lampard. Jennings got the header in, but again, no trouble for Noah. Celtic have gone ahead 2-1 against Airdrie. Celtic 2, Airdrie 1. Mullery with the throw. No, it'll be Conway with the throw. Mullery going there for Fulham. The two skippers. Billy Bonds knocking it down, but only knocking it straight to Busby. A nice turn by him. Here's Mullery again. Fulham now swarming forward. Right on half-time, it's with Conway. Bonds backing off him, and Conway will get this cross in, and it's not a bad one. It had a, in two minds for just a moment. Across there by Conway, you can see he was in two miles just for a moment, then it bounced well for him. Right on half time now, and in fact, there goes the half time whistle. First half dominated by Fulham, and there go John Lyle and Ron Greenwood off to that dressing room of West Ham's. And as Alan Ball says, they're going to have plenty to talk about and sort out during this half-time interval. Fulham from the second division have dominated the middle of the field. They've been first with everything. They've been more positive than West Ham. And West Ham never for one moment have looked like getting into their rhythm. But Fulham as yet have not been able to score the goals that matter. We have a half-time score here at... Wembley Stadium in this 1975 Cup Final, which is Fulham nil, West Ham nil.
Why do you feel it'll be a psychological setback, Alan, if they don't score after all that dominance? Well, when, when, I'm, when I'm playing in a team that's so much on top and you, you don't knock a goal and you think, well, we can't be on top for 90 minutes, we can't dominate a team for 90 minutes, and, and it's the times that you don't dominate a team that they're likely to score, funnily enough. But uh, that's why I'm a little bit... I feel a little bit sorry for Fulham because they're superior to them putting the goals and uh, I'd be, you know, if there's any, any worry at all that they've got, that's that's the only one they've got. Do you think West Ham might be tempted to bring on Bobby Gould? Well, I would think they'll see how it goes, but uh, it must have, have the lads have been saying, a target man up there who's got to come and get this ball and hold it up for people to come and play. They've got to keep the ball, otherwise they obviously you can't play without it. But I think they'll also be shoving Padden and getting him more involved, and also Bonds. Right, so that's something for us to look out for as we start this second half, that Graham Padden will be pushed into more adventurous, aggressive and attacking positions for West Ham. To put a little more pressure on the Fulham defence that was uh, put on them in the first half. Fulham nil, West Ham nil. We're about to start the second 45 minutes of this 1975 Cup Final. West Ham now attacking the goal to our right. Brooking, back for Taylor, and across to Lampard. Match started, in fact, before the managers have got anywhere near their seats, and Lacey again, who's had a good first half. Just getting back to their seats now, the uh, various managers and coaches. Busby to Conway. Busy little stride, but not a good pass there, falling straight for Billy Bonds. Now for Holland. Brooking wanting it on the far side, and Holland really making rather a mess of that one. Taylor getting in there with the header. Here's Patton. Played now for Trevor Brooking. Taylor's in the middle, so too is Billy Jennings and Bobby Moore again for West Ham. For uh, Fulham, of course. Old habits die hard. Mitchell's header, Busby off balance. <laughs> Taylor, back for Frank Lampard, flicked on very neatly there for Billy Jennings. Brooking finding Patton. Play on, said the referee, although Brooking was brought down by Conway. Taylor looking for something and finding nothing. Now it's with Bobby Moore. Telling Slough to move forward, Barrett to stretch out. And the pass doesn't get through to Mitchell, though. Holland for West Ham. Lock. Taylor playing it for Lampard. Brooking. Looks at the moment to be the one man who might pull something out of the bag for West Ham, and there's a good pass that's found Billy Bonds and Bobby Moore again there for Fulham. Won't be hustled, won't be ruffled. Here's Conway, Mullery, played back for Lacey. Patton will take it. Taylor. And a goal kick. Lost a little bit of its momentum just after half time this game. And uh, I think it'll need somebody to do something a little bit special to get it on its feet again. They tried, the crowd are trying very hard because they, they enjoyed a great first half. Off the top of Brookings' head, Billy Bonds is there. Holland to Bonds again. 
Beaten by Mitchell and beaten very well by Mitchell. And then the, the challenge by McDowell, winning it for West Ham. And away goes McDowell now for West Ham. A long raking shot. Oh, and my goodness, Miller very nearly let that one go. He got it, and then they seemed to lose it for a moment. It's a good shot. It's a good shot. The lad, he, he would have scored. He was ready to pounce on it, and he just managed to grab it in time. Well done, lad. Now it's with McDowell. Lampard. Taylor, who was the man who was very nearly in there, as Dennis Law and Jimmy Greaves used to be so often for anything that might rebound off a goalkeeper. Fraser getting in first, but I think the feet were a little too high. It's probably constituting dangerous kicking and a free kick for Fulham. Here's Bobby Moore. Played again for Fraser. Slough to Moore. Building patiently at the moment, Fulham. Mullery looking around for what options are open. A sweeping pass to John Fraser again. Careful, precise pass which Slough didn't take. And Brooking and Holland between them now can break it away. Good tackle back though by Slough. Conway coming in there, then giving it to Brooking. So Brooking for West Ham. Bonds has made a surging run down the right. And here's Billy Bonds. Again, there was no one to give it to once he made that great run. And this is what there's a trouble with West Ham all afternoon. They've, they've got down here and they've had nobody to play it in the box to. Here's Alan Taylor. And a corner given. If they're going to do anything at all, West Ham, it'd have to be something brilliant from an individual because as a team and as, and as a, a middle three and a front three, they're not playing at all well. And the one individual, I think, is probably Trevor Brooking, who probably has got it in him to... Uh, he's, the, up yeah, he's the one I'd be looking forward to to do something really, really good. There's number 10, Trevor Brooking, but it's number 8, Graham Patton, then who's going to take this corner for West Ham. Curled in under that full and crossbar again. Jennings couldn't reach it, but it's not away yet by any means. Mullery right in there to assert himself. Taylor knocking it back again. Onto the back netting, and a goal kick. Brookings header, Jennings, now Conway. Busby's gone wide for him, Mitchell's gone through the middle, Muller is steaming up behind him. Here's Busby. Played again for Mullery. Low cross this time, Kevin Locke getting it away, off the referee, and Lampard away. Bobby Moore. Brilliant play by Bobby there, he read the situation fantastic. And there's the long pass from Bobby Moore, and it could send uh, Busby away, but Locke again guarding Busby so closely. And again, all credit to young Kevin Locke. Mullery to Busby. Conway. Hit low there as Billy Bonds whacks it away to where it's safe. Both teams, the final ball into the box after they work their way down the flanks has been very poor. Mind you, this is a, this is a failing in English football at the moment. It's with Mitchell. Oh, and Mitchell's got past his man this time, and Day, a great save! It's about the first time that anybody's got past Kevin Locke, but Mitchell did it then. He did well, and he turned on him. Mind, it was a great chance, the ball was on the volley for him. The angle probably was a little bit narrow, but it was a great save, but I thought he, he could have done better with that after getting through like that. But it's a corner. Mitchell right up there, of course, for it. Hit low and not very accurately, straight to Pat Holland. Cutbush doing well, but Holland showing a bit of aggression that West Ham have lacked for so long. Now the guile coming there from Trevor Brookie, but the whistle had gone. Referee Pat Partridge having a word with uh, John Cutbush. Locke. Taylor. To the other Taylor, Alan Taylor. Now Mitchell for Fulham. Conway's outside him. And look who's right up here, John Fraser. Ball stood in play. Referee looked hard at his linesman, but uh, no flag. 
and Al Patton, very deep indeed. Billy Bonds. Patton. It's a white wall every time these men try to come forward and look for a bit of space, but now maybe Patton can get something here. Here's Billy Jennings, and again, Lacey was there. Good game, John Lacey. He's playing ever so well, yes, he's, uh, he's bottled up the centre of the field very well along with Bobby Moore. You've got to keep going square all the time, West Ham. They, they can't go forward, as they, I'm sure they'd wish they could. Well, that's all credit to Fulham. Moore's head on. Bonds going in once more. Got a few more people up this time, West Ham. And Billy Jennings is on the far side, but again he couldn't get the header in. Brooking was hopeful that something might fall his way on the edge of the area. Pat. Made right back for Locke. Now for Lampard. Jennings. For Lampard. Hit in high and hopefully towards Billy Barnes. Oh, and that very nearly fell for Alan Taylor. Pulling away, though, at uh, Fraser's shirt. Free kick to Fulham. He hasn't missed very much, Pat Partridge. <laughs> Ten minutes of the second half gone, both here at Wembley and at Hampden Park. And at Hampden Park, Celtic have now gone into a 3-1 lead against Airdrie. Now it's Busby. Taylor's ball. Alan Slough with a throw, throw for Fulham. Lacey. Conway. Moore. Fraser again, leaving it once more for Conway. Fraser, Mullery, Fulham beginning to build up a bit of rhythm that they showed in the first half again. Mullery, showing great patience here, waiting for the obvious opening to come. Moore, oh, that was very un Bobby Moore like. Straight to Pat Holland. Now West Ham, if they come forward quickly, might find something. It's Brooking. Lock. And Brooking again. Careful little chip inside this time to Frank Lampard, hit right foot and wide. They built something up there for one of the few times in the game where Sam and they looked good. When it was Trevor Brooking who made the forward run and he, he built it up and it finally came to Lampard, who struck this well, but fortunately didn't really catch it as well as he would have liked, I'm sure. Mallory. Mitchell, lock again. That was a fairly wild pass, and uh, it's a throw to Fulham. Slough. West Ham fans continue to make more of the noise, but I think at the moment it's just a brave face they're putting on it. Billy Barnes to Kevin Lock. Patton. Again, very, very deep. Holland. Oh, that could be dangerous, but Patton just got in in the nick of time before Busby, and here's Tommy Taylor. West Ham at the moment doing... Uh, not doing themselves justice at all. But still nil-nil. Brooking trying to keep McDowell going, and Bobby Moore again at the centre of things for Fulham. Well, the second successive bad pass that Bobby Moore's made, this time straight to Brooking. That rack up for Bobby Moore, two good passes on the run. I think it is. <laughs> now it's with Bonds. McDowell. Lock. to go West Ham, they're going to get very frustrated shortly and the game could be slipping away from them. Mind you, Fulham haven't gone at them as much as they, I would like to see them because I think they're ready for the taking West Ham at the moment. Taylor. 
Fraser having a sly tug at Taylor's shirt. And he's got a corner. Again, Tommy Taylor will go up for this one. Again, John Mitchell will go back. West Ham just keeping uh, Lampard and Locke. I'm and McDowell. I'm beginning to fear for Fulham a little bit because they're not... They're not showing me the killer instinct I'd like to see in, in getting the goal and putting, going about winning the game. They're just content on playing good football and right. bettering West Ham in that division. Right, well, now it's Padden with the corner for West Ham. Again hit low and again Bobby Moore is there and it comes back again for Graham Padden. Chance to curl another one in and again Bobby Moore and again it's off the referee. <laughs> That's twice it's hit Pat Partridge in those sort of situations which can happen to anybody. It was a nice gesture of Pat Partridge. Apologise to Miller there. Miller must have shouted at him. That was nice. Now it's Jimmy Conway for Fuller. As Alan was saying, just lacking this little killer instinct. That's all they're lacking at the moment. Otherwise, as he said, West Ham are there for the taking. But still nil-nil. And maybe it'll be West Ham who do the taking as Holland takes it up now, down the left Fuller. Billy Jennings screaming for the ball, hitting it first time, Miller gets it, Taylor turns it back, yes, Alan Taylor! 1-0 to West Ham against the run of the play, the side that have been on the receiving end for all the first half, and a good percentage of the second, make the breakthrough. It was, it was a bad mistake by the fullback in the first place, this was a great strike with his left foot by Billy Jennings, Keeper's got to it, but he's, he, all he could do was push it out. He came out and now the angle hit. It's gone through his legs here, very unfortunately, but the lad did ever so well. Taylor, he's very good at sniffing goals like that, and he's done ever so, ever so well in this, this competition, getting goals, this boy. And there's a man who six months ago was in the fourth division playing in front of a handful of people for Rochdale. He really can't believe it's all come true, I'm sure. Alan Taylor putting West Ham 1-0 into the league. against all the run of the play and you can only feel sorry for Fulham have they got enough fight and guts now to come back and take this game by the scruff of the neck once more well they don't look too happy but there's a great relief on that Fuller on that West Ham bench right now and a little bit of concern now amongst the Fulham management and away it goes Billy Jennings again chasing that long ball and Lacey very coolly getting it to Bobby Moore just over a quarter of an hour of the second half gone. And the Bubbles song can be heard all around Wembley Stadium. Conway. As I said just before, I fear, I fear for Fulham because this always happens in football, you're so much on top, you get to relax a little bit, and the other team inevitably come and snatch you, and I feel terribly sorry for them, though, for them, because they played ever so well. Asby looking for a bit of space, will he find Conway? No free kick, said the referee, and Patton can take it up again for West Ham. Taylor's right on ahead, he's onside as well, because Patton held on to it, and then gave it away to Mallory. The short ball now to Slough. Mallory. Slough going again as though his life depends upon it, but Lampard can turn it back to Mervyn Day. West Ham He's had a terrific game on Slough. He's done very, very well. West Ham now gain comfort and gain strength from that goal. And all the, the work and the, the hard work of Fulham. They'll be a little bit downhearted, but let's hope they can fight back and get back into this game. Barrett now, for Fulham. A free kick to Fulham, fouled by John McDowell. Bobby Moore looking around quickly for what's open to him. And won't just play an idle ball, he's going to make it count. Playing it to Viv Busby. Taylor gets that one away, but there's a free kick again to Fulham, and Bobby Moore wants it quickly. Twenty-one years old, 
And the man who's put West Ham into the lead, Alan Taylor. Bobby Moore with a free kick then for Fulham. A deep one towards John Lacey on the far side. It was Billy Jennings who got right up there. Mullery. Now for Cutbush. Deep cross coming in again. That should be Mervyn Days and is. Billy Bonds now for West Ham. Billy Jennings. Bonds. Played for Padden. Lampard coming up quickly, letting one really wrap there with his left foot. Holland. Oh, what a good ball by Holland there for Padden. And hit well by Padden, number two! He's done it again! Alan Taylor! Two goals in the sixth round, two goals in the semi-final, two goals in the final, Alan Taylor. Alan Ball. Graham Patton's played the first time he's brought forward here and he's made the goal virtually. Keeper's not held it, I thought he could have done a little bit better here, Mello, with that kid's there again, sniffing away. Fantastic experience for him out there now. Dear me, he, he, he will want to play now until about 8 o'clock tonight, that lad. And poor old Peter Mella, his mistake, and yet it's been his fine goalkeeping through the earlier rounds that have kept Fulham on an even keel. But it was his mistake there. And goalkeepers always get punished more than anybody else. West Ham, after being on the receiving end for so very long, find themselves two goals into the lead and it's going to take an awful lot to wrest this cup final from them now McDowell but can Fulham do it yet away goes Viv Busby Taylor's the man in the way as he got the pace to get past him it goes off the legs of Tommy Taylor and it's a corner Inspiration and all the guile and all the courage of Mallory now and all the craft of men like Bobby Moore and the fire of Mitchell and the fire of Busby and all these men can do now is wait and suffer and these can wait and hope so a corner for Fulham they need a goal badly now to get back into this game cut push after it did very well indeed there and Taylor heading it away for a corner. There'll be a few knees up down the old East End tonight. Lacey up again for this corner. Mitchell couldn't get there with his head. Mullery there looking for something with the left foot. And a free kick. It's incredible how a game can change by goals. Fulham played all the football, played fantastic first half and never turned the Super out into goals. And now here we are, West Ham, two goals in three or four minutes and all of a sudden the game was completely gone against Fulham. It's, in, it's the craziest game in the world, football. Well, there's still about 22 and a half minutes of this crazy game to go. And it's a free kick to West Ham. And what an incredible thing if Alan Taylor should complete a hat-trick. There he is, he's galloping around that full of penalty area as Patton plays a short free kick to McDowell. Billy Bonds still in play. Now it's a throw to West Ham. Suddenly all the little things go West Ham's way as well. Taylor... All played in nicely there for Conway. This might be an opening for Fulham. Muller is right in there too, and Conway also. Holland right back, surrounded by Claret and Blue. And 
there's a bit more fire and fight about West Ham now. And there's the long ball from Lampard, and Taylor's after it. Down he goes, referee hands behind his back, no foul. And Bobby Moore can bring it away for Fulham. Slough. Mullery. Barrett. That's a corner. Up goes Lacey again. There's the corner floating in again towards John Lacey, and Lacey got ahead of to it. My goodness, and Mervyn Day had troubles getting that one away, and it's not out yet. Barrett turning it in again, Busby just over. Lacey who put West Ham in all sorts of trouble with that header at the far post so it's a goal kick Mervyn Day with it Jennings, Lacey, Busby, fighting for every ball, chasing every ball. But now Fulham have 20 minutes left in which to retrieve that disastrous five minutes or so when they conceded two goals. in the West Ham uh, side in this second half, Alan. You're right to say, of course, the first time that Patton went forward, they uh, scored their second goal. I haven't seen a lot of difference in them. I think Fulham have dropped the tempo a little bit. I think they might have put a little bit into the first half without getting the goal they wanted. And I think they, they just might have tied a little bit. But uh, West Ham are, uh, uh, are going after them. They haven't played particularly great, West Ham, but as I say, Fulham have dropped their tempo a little bit and allowed them to come into the game. Patton then with the throw for West Ham with just under 20 minutes to go. Jennings back over his head, Miller grabbing that one safely before Taylor could get in. Locke. Taylor. Tommy Taylor. Right, he'll get another go. Kevin Locke. something with this though Lampard got it away to Brooking Brooking letting it run as he does so well Puck pushed back after him Patton now coming up quickly in support so too is Holland now there's Patton floating down that left touchline which is something he didn't do at all in the first half back for Brooking McDowell going in on this one but Barrett getting the header in here's Billy Bonds now once more. Taylor. A little 
pitch it forward for Alan Taylor. Tommy Taylor again. is there, here's Moore are we going to see him pushing forward a bit more now I wonder Busby Lock and Bond struggling or rather Taylor and Bond struggling for that one here's Fraser to Bobby Moore Slough to Cutbush Wasn't much left uh, open to him other than that. Busby's backward header. Mitchell now. Now John Mitchell! Saved by Mervyn Day! And that would have been such a valuable moment for Fulham. Mitchell finding the ball, bouncing his way. Alan? He did well. He got a little bit of a lucky bounce here, this lad, but he took it, he took it well. He had a good shot. This fellow's been called upon twice to make saves at Mervyn Day and done just that. It's a good save. Quarter of an hour to go now. And a goal then might have opened it up again so completely for Fulham. As it is, there are still these two goals down, both scored by Alan Taylor. The 21-year-old who cost £40,000 but is worth his weight in gold at the moment. Jennings after this one, Taylor's right in there too, Brooking coming up fast. Taylor in there, but Fulham again get it away through Fraser. Bobby Moore. Barrett. Hit it straight at Padden and was lucky to get it again. Conway. Here's Mallory. Good run here by Fraser. Taylor will come right back. They've got the they've got their game won now, West Ham. All they want to do is content to keep the ball and slow the game down. They take the time and just play cruise in now, 15 minutes to go and finish this game and win the cup. They don't want to score any more goals, they just want to keep the ball. I'm sure this fellow has something to say about that, though. I think he's probably played at Allen so long that he would say to himself, you could never be sure. That's right. You've got to keep on playing to the final whistle. Don't take even two goals can be thrown away. And now here's Brooking looking for a third one now for West Ham. There's the cross going in and it's a third one. There's Patton on the far side and it took Conway to block that one and put it behind for the corner. That was significant there. Brooking took the ball up and played a ball, came wide on the right-hand side, played a ball right over the far side, and what we've been asking Padden to do all afternoon, there he is again, the second time in the afternoon, came up on that left-hand side there and had a great shot blocked. It's really added a new dimension to this West Ham play in the second half, Alan. Well, they've pushed forward a little bit, and uh, it's been dividends, fortunately, for them. Well, here's a corner now to which Trevor Brooking's going to take for West Ham. Tommy Taylor's come up again to put more pressure on Peter Miller in that Fulham goal. It'll come out again for Brooking. Played back for Kevin Locke. No praise is too high for Locke for his performance in the first half. Now here's Tommy Taylor. They feel they can fling people forward now, West Ham, and there's the cross coming in towards Billy Jennings, and it might come again for Jennings, no. More now for Fulham. Fraser. Slough. Mullery. Mitchell. Turning well and always gone by Holland back to Mullery again, but Lampard can play it out. To Alan Taylor. On now for Trevor Brooking. Jennings is away on the right and he's offside.
Your legs don't get tired when you're 2-0 in front here. The West Ham lads' legs now won't be tired as all. The Fulham lads will be feeling the pinch a little bit now. Slough. Mitchell. And Bonds is in there. But in there unfairly. I'd like to see a goal here. Right, oh, it would liven it up then. I'd love to see a goal. Well, Muller is uh, taking a kick quickly, and uh, Barrett can't quite find a way through yet. But he can now, there's the cross, but it's behind. West Ham will take the time over this, corn, uh, over this goal kick. They don't want to be in any area at all. The game's won for them now. In their minds, mind you, they'd like to play till about 8 o'clock, I think. <laughs> 2 0 in front. Well, they got here by beating Southampton and Swindon after a replay, Queen's Park Rangers, Arsenal, and Ipswich after a replay. For them with all those cup games three against Hull, four against Nottingham Forest, one against Everton, one against Carlisle, and two against Birmingham City. And it looks as though they might well now founder at the very last goal. Free kick. Ten minutes now to go. Both by Alan Taylor. Kevin Locke to Tommy Taylor. McDowell playing it on again to Alan Taylor. It'll be a throw to West Ham. Being thoroughly professional, I shouldn't feel sorry for Fulham, but I, uh, but I, but I do, because they've, they've, they've come here and they've contested this game for for an hour, and they lost away from there. Now it's Pat, another cross by him to Trevor Brooking, who's got in behind that defence again. That could have gone anywhere to any one of four West Ham players. McDowell now, Patton. Again, they've come out quickly, Fulham in defence, to catch people offside, but it uh, didn't really need to work that time because it's Busby to take it up for Fulham. Well, if Fulham could still pinch one, they might even pinch another one. Mullery. Conway on the far side. Slough is up in support. Now it's Slough's first time cross. Mitchell going for it, but Billy Bonds is there. Brooking. Must have got a nudge in the back and a free kick. All credit to Kevin Locke, who's, who's stood strong in this West Ham defence, weathered the storm early on, and is now in complete control of everything. He's telling everybody to calm down there, taking his time with his free kick. By this lad looks a great prospect of the future. It's been a great cup run for him. In fact, his wife presented him with a little daughter, Carly, about ten minutes after one of the earlier cup rounds against Queen's Park Rangers, Kevin Locke. So he'll have a lot to remember the cup competition for in 1974-75. And he really has been, as you say, Alan, an outstanding player for West Ham today. But now there's more to uh, for this West Ham defence to face as Mitchell takes it up again for Fulham. Slough. Fraser, some of the hopeful West Ham fans already beginning to whistle a final whistle to draw the referee's attention to it. But on my watch, still seven minutes to go. And the two skippers there. That was great. Now Holland for West Ham. Patton away outside in. Pushing forward so much more now. Played back again for Lampard to hit one first time. And what a good save by Peter Miller. Patton's creating all sorts of trouble here. All sorts of trouble this second half on this left-hand side of the field. A great ball, a great strike and a great save. Great save, that is. And Patton's the man who's, who's come forward and making an awful lot of difference. I think they must have heard the lads at half-time. Well, it's exactly what you and Kevin uh, Keegan and Mark McDonald were saying at half-time. If West Ham were going to do it, they'd have to push Patton forward. That's what they've done, that's what they're doing now. The whistle has gone, a free kick to West Ham. And away goes Murray.
Barrett, now has he got the pace to get past McDowell? It looks as though he has, and he got his cross in well. Tommy Taylor there on the other end of it, though. And Holland for West Ham to Alan Taylor. Well, he's another man with a lot of pace. Brooking. Jennings on the far side. Brooking just playing with it now, keeping possession. A little back heel and Patton again taking up this attacking position. A lovely left foot of his determined to, to, to drive one low. Brooking played on this time for Lampard. Oh. <laughs> he went for nutmegs there, I think, on, on Lampard on more and more so than down with the CK. Right, here's Bobby Moore again to Alan Mullery. And I think the game now really going through its last formalities with five minutes left. West Ham 2-0 into the lead. And in Scotland, Celtic are still leading by three goals to one in the Scottish Cup final against Airdrie. Taylor in first. And it's West Ham in defence who look the more positive now. It's West Ham who are getting there first, where in the first half it was Fulham who were always first. I think, that's, I think that's just through the goals, Brian. The goals have changed that. It gives you a little bit more will to run, a little bit more will to want to play when you score goals. That's what I was fighting for Fulham for in the first half, because they deserve to score one. Now it's Conway. Conway again. Moore hit in first time. Oh, and uh, Taylor miskicked kicked that one. But Holland was there to put it back into safety. Mitchell did well to cross that. Barrett with a shot on the turn. Busby, has he got a shot on the turn? No, knocked away again by that Fulham defence. Billy Jennings, cheeky little back heel there, sending Brooking on his way. But Brooking is virtually up there on his own. He has to play it back there for Billy Bonds. A nice chest trap by him, and he played it all in one movement out to Graham Patton. This is the time players love when they're 2 nothing in front and there's no worries when they're in front, and they're just knocking the ball about now. This one, this Lampard is, crossing that one in, Mellor's catch. This is when English players are at the best, when they can, they're can enjoying it now, the West Ham players. They know the game's virtually theirs. They just want to knock the ball about. Oh, well, course. maybe Barrett's got something to say about that, though. And away goes Les Barrett. Oh, pulled back badly there by McDowell. Bad challenge there by McDowell on Les Barrett. What a beautiful piece of acceleration by him, and I wonder what the referee will do about him. Look at that, running by Barrett. And look great, now as he's great. pulled back there by John McDowell. No name take, only a free kick. Murray having a word with the referee. I think they might be a little annoyed about that. There was a bad challenge by McDowell. And the West Ham wall knocked back ten yards. Now, can they do something with it? Alan Slough is alongside Bobby Moore. Mullery is just behind him. If they could strike a goal now, it might make a difference. It comes to Slough. It comes to Lacey, chipped in there. McDowell heads that one away. Mullery now picking it up again for Fulham. The long one again towards John Lacey on the far side, and Lacey's won it in the air, and Cutbus almost got it in there. Slough looked for a shot as well, and Taylor in the end got it away to Billy Bonds. Two minutes to go. And two goals required by Fulham to keep the game alive. West Ham are almost there. And there's the man who in two minutes will know that the cup is going to be his to collect from the uh, Duke of Kent. Bobby Moore now. The Conway. So unlucky for Fulham, having achieved so much in that first half without quite sticking the ball in the back of the net. But here's Mitchell, stopped again by Tommy Taylor. Taylor's had a good second half for West Ham. 
both the Taylors, in fact, Allen for scoring those goals, and Tommy, a very sound game at the centre of their defence. Moore. We're now coming to the final minute as Slough turns another one in. McDowell is there for West Ham. A flick on for Brooking. Jennings is up, so too is Alan Taylor. Here it is, played for the man who's got two goals already. Crossed in again, not a very good one. Moore all the time in the world to get it away. Mullery inside the last minute. Fraser. Struggling there for a bit of pace, John Fraser. He's very tired, the lad, you can see as well. He's worked his heart out. He'll be very upset. The young players of Fulham here haven't got a, a cup winner's medal. It's terrible for them now. These are the terrible minutes when they know they can't win the game, they know there's nothing they can do to win the game. These are terrible minutes for, for players who are losing at Wembley. I've had it twice, and it's terrible. There's just nothing you can do. Nothing at all. Day, the long clearance. Fraser with the header, now Taylor, the man who's looking for a hat-trick, and Billy Jennings now, for West Ham, Taylor's gone into the middle, Holland is deep, Taylor looked for it with a near-post one, Holland hopes to come in, and in the end it was Cutbush who got it away. We are now in injury time, and there's very little of that, indeed I don't think the trainers have been on the field. And the West Ham bench on the left there, Ron Greenwood and John Lyle, know that they are almost there, they know that they're going to get European football next season, in the Cup Winners' Cup. A corner then for West Ham, which Graham Padden is going to take. Filled in again towards Alan Taylor. Lampard, again a look at his uh, watch by referee Pat Partridge. A sign from both his lines, and the time is up! And West Ham have won the cup, and Alan Taylor's two goals have done it. Congratulations there between John Lyle and Ron Greenwood. Commiserations with Alex Stock. A sportsman there who went to congratulate John Lyle, and there's the young man, 21 years old, whose two goals have given the cup to West Ham. Bobby Moore, sadness for him after being in a Fulham side that played so well, finally succumbing to his old side. Alan Mallory, who did his utmost to, supply, to really inspire Fulham throughout that first half. Alex Stock. They're lonely moments for him, but really he has done a tremendous job over the months. Man of the match for me, Kevin Locke, brilliant in that West Ham defence when most they needed it. The two goalkeepers, Peter Meller, whose mistake led to that second goal. Super Hammers, and there's a Hammers fan, knows what Bobby Moore means to West Ham. And John Lyle, the West Ham team manager. What a proud moment for him. Graham Patton, the man who showed nothing in the first half and everything in the second. And the Fulham players can only wait and watch as the West Ham men go to John Lyle, knowing just how much John Lyle has done for them over the last months. Mervyn Day, I think, who's very unemotional, but he's wiping away a tear there, Mervyn Day. Look at him wiping away a tear. The eyes are glistening there, look, 19 years old, one of the youngest goalkeepers ever to appear in a Wembley Cup final. And with the tears, there are the smiles of victory as well. Well, I've always thought Mervyn Day to be one of the most unemotional young men I've ever met. But now it's West Ham who go up to receive the Cup, led by their skipper, Billy Bonds, And no matter how long he plays professional football, there won't be many moments to match this. Billy Bonds, cup winners for West Ham, receiving the cup from his Royal Highness the Duke of Kent.
and for the first time I've ever seen it, there's an invasion of the Wembley pitch. The crowd have gone to the Wembley pitch. West Ham fans, they'll have to be gone off.